So we have an option of uh, multi-link feature if you are using PPP protocol. Like if you remember, we have seen PPP is a protocol which is most commonly used on the WAN links, a more widely adopted protocol because it supports some authentication, which we have seen in the previous sections. And also it supports a feature called multi-link error correction and compression. Uh, it's, it's going to support some compression methods, uh, which helps in reducing the load. Now probably in this section, we are going to see how to configure multi-link point-to-point protocol. So probably you'll see something like this MLPPP. So it's something multi-link point-to-point protocol. Multi-link is more similar to your ether channel, what we have done in the switching concepts. So it's something like where if you have two separate links, let's say, uh, if, you, if you just get back to in the olden days, where you, you're going to use some lease line connections, where you hardly find high speed links. Nowadays, we can have some 10 to 100 Mbps link, uh, lease line connections still we can, we can go with. But uh, in the olden days, you know, uh, you have, you, you may come across a scenario where you have a provider who is just providing only a WAN link with some very small amount of speed, let's say 128 Kbps, or hardly, let's say, if I go with the today's networks, I'm using two Mbps of uh, lease line connection between these two, and then, also, I'm using with um, some 1.5 Mbps of link. I got two links connecting between the two routers, two separate least line connections. If you are running any routing protocol, probably my OSPF or EHRP, so if both the links are not having the same bandwidth, probably the cost will not be the same. So it's going to uh, use any one of the link as a forwarding and the second link will be only used as a backup link because they are not on the same speed. So if they are same speed, then any routing protocol will do load balancing because the cost will be same. If the cost is same, then probably they uh, they use the both the links to forward the traffic. But if the cost is not same, in that case, it's going to use any one link as a forwarding. So at a time, only one link will be utilized. So probably I want to utilize both the links. So my requirement is I want to aggregate, use both the links to forward the traffic and we can configure something called, if these links are using PPP protocol or PPP encapsulation, I can configure a feature called multi-link where I can aggregate multiple WAN links into one logical link and which is going to provide me some load balancing of the traffic on the different links with the different speeds at the same time allows some level of redundancy as well. So which means if any one of the link fails, still I have an alternate route to communicate in case if any one of the links fails. So that's something we can do with PPP and uh, it's not mandatory that both the links has to be same speed. Okay, the only condition is they must be running PPP multi-link feature. Okay, so what we'll do is now we will go ahead and try to verify the configurations of the PPP here. Now, what I did is I actually got two links here as per my scenario. I got two links which is connecting between router one and router two, and both the links are S1, S0 by zero and S0 by one, S0 by zero and S0 by one interface. And I have nothing configured on this interface except my default configurations. And the default, they are with a no shutdown interfaces and there's nothing configured. So the first command we need to do is we need to enable PPP encapsulation on this link, mandatory, uh, because you know, uh, multi-link feature will be only enabled if you have a PPP authentication on both the PPP uh, encapsulation, sorry, not authentication, encapsulation on both the sides. And also, you should not have any configurations present on the on the interface. And also remember, we use no shutdown command as well. I did not use no shutdown command here. We need to say no shutdown command. So no shutdown command also should be present because your physical interfaces has to be up before you actually start using them as a multi-link. Now, what, what exactly we need to configure apart from that? There's only two commands we need to configure on the interface. And the first command is we need to enable the PPP multi-link feature, the first command. And the second command, we need to, t we need to create one group number, group one. Now, this group one is actually the name of the interface which is going to create multi-link one. So whenever you give this command, it's going to create one a multi-link interface and that multi-link interface number will be one, whatever we give here. 
and based on that we are going to assign the ip address on the multi-link interface not on the physical interface so which means uh, if you say interface multi-link one and we are going to assign the ip address 10.001 on this side 10.002 on the other side and they should be able to ping the interface has to be up and they should be able to ping with each other on the opposite interfaces it's going to confirm that my multi-link configurations are going to be uh, perfect so now additionally these are the minimum configurations what i am discussing here if you want to go with some additional configurations as you may you may think of enabling authentication on this we can do that but again whatever the authentication configurations you have decided to do it you have to enable on the multi-link interface not on the physical interface okay because now once we configure this multi-link now the router one is going to treat this multi-link as one interface not as two separate interfaces and it will start forwarding the traffic from both the interfaces uh, effective way you know load balancing uh, more kind of that but the router treat it as only one link so authentication commands you can configure if you want but the same commands like what we used to do on the s1 by 0 interface the same commands we need to configure here whatever we did in the previous authentication labs we configure on this multi-link interface let's go ahead and verify the configurations i already have my two routers connected more in the same format same way as as you can see on the diagram here okay so i got two links connected on the more similar way so i'll go to router one and on the router one if i give show run interface s0 by 0 I have nothing configured show run interface s1 s0 by 1 uh, it's something that there's, there's no ip address and by default they are in shutdown state so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, auto 1 and then the first command i'll go is interface s1 by 0 i'll say encapsulation ppp and no shutdown commands so these are the only two commands i need to configure on both of my interfaces no shutdown and then encapsulation ppp okay so let me just copy paste these same commands on the router 2 as well so most of the time when i have similar configurations to configure i prefer to use this command do show history now this command will show you what are the commands i just typed and i can copy those commands and i can paste them again on the router 2 because on the router 2 same interfaces same same commands it will save your time so this is something a best practice you know you can try it out because when you are doing same kind of configurations on multiple routers instead of using show run and copy pasting those things i prefer to use show to do show history commands so i did the configuration of uh, these two commands like no ip address is already there uh, no shutdown i have given and encapsulation ppp and on the router one now i'll go to my actual ppp commands only two commands ppp multi-link there's only one command now this command is going to enable the multi-link feature and then i need to say group one so if i give do show history now the same two commands i have to configure on my s s0 by one and then on the router two also interface s0 by zero two commands and also on s0 by one same two commands done after that if I verify they are here just like you know unlike your ether channel configurations it will not automatically create that multi-link interface we need to do it manually so you know, we need to say interface multi-link one and then we need to we need to say you can see once you once you do that uh, once you give this command interface multi-link one you can see now interface change state to down and then change state to up I think after that it changes the status and then now you will see the multi-link interface is up right now it is unassigned so i'll say no shutdown and then i'll give some ip address right now it is down down because the other side i did not configure completely so let me just configure this on the router 2 10.002 with the same exact ip address whatever i'm using i'm using slash 24 or slash 30 whatever you want okay now let's go to router 1 and on the router one also i'm going to say interface multi-link one because i'm going to use um, the logical interface as one and then ip address will be 10.001 and 
and then 255.255.255.250 then no shutdown and then now if I verify show IP interface brief I can see my interface is up the multi-link interface is up and uh, if I try to ping to the opposite interface I should be able to ping so if you're able to ping it confirms that your multi-link configurations are working fine and after that if you want you can run, run some protocol on it like OSPF I'm going to run I'm going to say 10 dot network advertising the 10 dot network in area 0 let me just copy paste the same commands on the router 2 as well now I should see router 1 and router 2 should be up and you can see what is the interface they are connecting they are not connecting on the physical interface now it looks like as one interface connecting between the two routers via multi-link interface